Hey, Julian Cross here, and have you ever heard somebody say, if your preamp is too noisy, you simply turn down the gain a bit and then bring back up the audio in post. This way you will have a lower noise floor. Well, this trick isn't working at all, and it can make things even worse. So why do people think that this trick is working? Well, if you increase the gain, you also increase the noise. And the logical reaction is to turn down the gain to lower the noise in your recording. And so far this is actually correct. If you turn down the gain of your preamp, the noise it creates is lowered as well. But there's a catch. If you lower the gain, not only the noise will be lower, but your signal you want to record is lowered as well. Let's say you turn down your gain by 6 decibels. The preamp noise will decrease by 6 dB and the signal you want to record is also lowered by 6 dB. So the microphone preamp gain and the noise scale together in a linear fashion. Well, that's not 100% correct and I will get back to that, but for now let's say that the gain and the noise scale together linearly. Okay, like I said, if you turn down the preamp by 6 dB, the noise and the signal will decrease by 6 dB. If you would then use 6 decibels of digital amplification in post, you would bring up your signal, but you would also bring up the noise again. So turning down your preamp to lower the noise and your signal and turning them back up again in post doesn't make much sense. You simply don't gain anything. See what I did there? I have to come up with better jokes. But okay, I think you now understand why this is not helping. But so far, turning down your gain and turning it up in post didn't change your noise floor at all. How could this possibly make things worse? Well, there are primarily two things. First of all, remember when I said that the noise and the gain of the preamplifier scale linearly. This is usually only true at middle to high gain settings of a preamp. At lower gain settings of a preamp, it starts to behave differently. Here the noise and the gain behave non-linearly. For example, if you would turn down your preamp by 6 dB in the lower gain section, your signal will drop by 6 dB. But the noise of the preamp might only drop by about 3 dB. And if you boost this back up in post, you now decrease the distance between your signal and the noise. And this is what's known as the signal to noise ratio, and it just got worse. There is another thing that can happen, and this has to do with the analog to digital converter. At some point in your audio chain, you do have to convert your analog signal into a digital one if you want to record it digitally. This happens in the ADC. And guess what? The ADC has a noise floor as well. Let's say this is the noise floor of the ADC. Now if you turn down your preamp, the signal drops and gets closer and closer to the noise floor of the ADC. And when you then bring this back up in post, the signal to noise ratio is worse than if you would have set your gain properly. Now I want to show you a small experiment I made to show you that everything I said actually translates into the real world and is not just something I've made up. Okay, here I have a signal generator which generates a signal, who would have thought? But most importantly, it creates a signal with constant amplitude. This is our reference signal and it represents the signal we want to record. I also got a Zoom H5 as the audio recorder and a 150 ohms dummy microphone. This plug will create roughly the same amount of noise as a dynamic mic, but without the acoustical output of a microphone. This is to make things consistent between test setups. Okay, in our first run, we record the signal like we normally would. So I turn up the gain until I achieve my desired recording level. Now I unplug the signal generator and plug in the dummy mic to record the noise floor. For our next test, I turn down the gain a bit and I will amplify the recording in post later on. So again, I record the signal from the signal generator this time the gain is set a little lower than I would normally set it. And of course, after that I will plug in the dummy mic again to record the noise floor. And the third test is our worst case scenario. I will turn down the gain even further and record the signal way too low. And again I record the noise with the dummy mic attached. Ok, I loaded all three recordings into Audition. As you can see, the first recording 
which we recorded with a proper level, the signal is around minus 12 dB. In our second recording, the signal is around minus 19 dB. This means that I turned down the gain by about 7 decibels between these two recordings. So let's bring the second recording back up again to match the first recording. I simply apply about 7 decibels of digital gain and now both recordings look the same. And I will also match the third recording to our first recording. Here the signal is very low and I have to amplify it by about 30 decibels to match the signals. So in the end our signal has the same amplitude in all three recordings, but we achieved this in different ways. Now let's compare the noise floor of these recordings and for that I will let you listen to them. As we expected, there is no difference in noise between the first recording, where we set the gain properly, and the second recording, where we turned down the gain a little and boosted the recording in post. This already shows you that this turning down the gain and boosting in post trick is not working. The noise is still the same. And the third recording had a higher noise floor than the first and second recording. This is what happens if you set your gain too low and boost it in post. This clearly shows that if you overdo it, you actually get more noise compared to a proper gain setting. Okay, I hope this clears things up a bit and you do not fall for this trick anymore. If you like this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to know more about audio recording, subscribe to not miss out on any future video. I see you in the next one.